powerful message today is rally day, but looking at what Jesus did, not only his words, but his actions. The disciples came with full of pride and full of their own kind of honor and their own type of understanding. And they went to Jesus and they wanted him to tell them they were the greatest in the kingdom of heaven because they were the ones who had left everything to follow him. So at that moment, they're putting themselves way up high on a pedestal as, boy, if you really want to look at who is the ones who are greatest, it's the ones that are following you, Jesus, the ones right before you. Affirm us. Tell us the things that we want to hear. And Jesus destroys their pride with a simple action. He brings a child in the midst of this group. Children at that time were to be seen and not heard. Children had nothing to offer society at that time. It was all the aged and the experienced and the wisdom, they said, would only come from those that have these life experiences. What type of lessons could a child give them? And Christ brings this child out, and he says to them, and we've changed the translation because a lot of people really bristle at what it used to be in English. Unless you change, now it says unless you turn and become like, it's basically change. Changing attitudes, changing hearts, changing lives to reflect more of the innocence and wonder of a child, the humility of a child. And Christ says these words, truly I say unto you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever receives a child like this receives me. How powerful is that for us this morning? So I thought back, and I, I did this discussion with some of my grandchildren. How is life different now than when you were a child? And I said, you can't believe the things I got to do as a child that you can't even imagine. Some of them very good and some of them very bad. What are some of the differences? When I was a child, no one even thought of using sunscreen. In fact, we would take um, baby oil and we would take Crisco and put that on as to get enhanced the darker and the more outside in the sun, and we spent all the time out in the sun. What are some of the other things that we did? We rode bicycles without helmets. No knee pads, no gloves, no nothing. You just hopped on the bike, and guess what you were going to do? You were going to fall off. It was guaranteed. Some of the things that weren't so good, when I told them this, they were shocked. When I was six years old and my dad didn't have any cigarettes, he'd give me $1.50 and say, go to the liquor store and pick up a pack of cigarettes. It was about a half mile from our house. And I would go and buy him cigarettes, and Mr. Kowalski, who knew everybody in town, would say, these are for your father, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell your father I said hello. Can you imagine today sending a six-year-old out to buy cigarettes? Just unheard of. The interesting thing, too, is we had no seat belts in our cars. Another interesting thing, our playground was over cement. If you fell off the monkey bars, you fell onto the concrete. There was no safety or no things. And then the two biggest things that I am thankful that my children and grandchildren didn't experience. We had a set of lawn darts. There were these dangerous missiles with a heavy metal tip on it, and you'd throw them in the air, and you'd hear of cases of people being skewered with them. And those were outlawed. You no longer can play lawn darts. But the big one, especially as a boy, you could go and buy fireworks without any restrictions. 
And I'm not talking boom fireworks. I'm talking about boom fireworks. Cherry bombs and M-80s, these dangerous things. I am so thankful that there have been some changes. I don't want my grandson to go and buy a pack of M-80s and see what happens if you put them in a milk jar. <laughs> those type of days and those times. But there are certain aspects of children that Christ and the scriptures can show us are valuable to learn today. The first thing is, feel your feelings. When a child is sad, he expresses that sadness. When a child is happy, they express that concept, I'm happy. You know, so often as you get older, you start to bottle up emotions and you start thinking, I don't want to be embarrassed, I don't want to cry, I don't want to laugh, I don't want to be too much, I'll be neutral. Because a good Christian just has a stoic face all the time. Nothing makes you happy, nothing makes you sad. That's not true. Learn from a child. Sometimes just allow your emotions. Let the Spirit work and in your heart and let you truly express how you feel. Let the truth come out and say, you know what, I'm sad. There are parts of today that make me sad. You know what's sad for me? The amount of time the children spend indoors. It seems like everything's structured to be indoors. When I was a child, it was very little structure, and there was a lot of play, and there was a lot of activity. Having grandparents who lived nearby, what a blessing to be able to learn. But I want us to get a little bit more of that childlike emotion. To say to God, God, you love me. Let me respond back and say, I love you. To be able to cry and say, Lord, I am sorry for my sins, and to let that outpouring show forth. Another thing about children that I love, I wish I could bottle their energy and that excitement. Now, I told you today there's a bounce house. Nobody got really excited. They're, we're going to have popsicles. Well, pastor, I can get a popsicle whenever I want. There are even sugar-free popsicles now that we bought just to make sure that everybody can have one. That excitement seems to be lost as you get older. And I'm afraid that we are taking our spiritual excitement and dampening it. We should be excited about the opportunities the church has today. I could have never imagined when I was a child being able to preach. I was not going to be a pastor. But to be able to preach to the world, being online and having it broadcast today, having it available for people that can't come to church, this to me is so exciting. It's a new era. Well, granted, I can't even open up a PDF. I mean, not, that's how limited my skills are. But I have individuals who are embracing this and making things possible in ways that I could never imagine. The excitement of the church, there are changes coming forth. What makes me excited is the 99 are going to be safe. We have the word of God, and the 99 are well secure within the body of Christ. What makes me excited is knowing that there are those who have gone astray. That makes it really exciting for the church, like a child. You know, when I was a youngster, everybody on the block got invited to every birthday. There was no concept of leave somebody out, but there is today. And it's kind of invaded into the church. We're excited to have people we love and care about, but we don't want certain people here. Let the lost remain lost. No. Let's get excited about children and having children here in the congregation and the worship. You know, every now and then I get that one parent, that one mother who brings that naughty child to church. And that child fidgets, and that child walks around, and that child 
is just a nuisance, and you can see certain people going, oh, what a disruption. Confession time. I was that child. My mother took me out to the parking lot more times and spanked me and would lock me in the car and say, you don't deserve to go into that church. You're just a ragamuffin. And if she called you a ragamuffin, whoa, watch out. That was as literally as being damned to hell as it could come in my mom's vocabulary. But then my grandmother said, ah, eh, let him come in. We'll keep him entertained. You know how she kept me entertained? Fed me candy. Well, that's no good. After the service, I was on the sugar high all the time. The excitement was not naturally induced. It was candy induced. But I want us as a congregation to be more Christ-like in our viewpoint to what children are bringing into the mix. They are bringing in humility. They are bringing in a wonder and excitement. Hearing the gospel in a way and seeing that light bulb go off, that they understand what it means for someone to love so deeply that it fulfills all of the rules and commands and all of everything being filled with this love. And you know what children are looking for? They're looking for the same thing you are. They're looking for love. You know what it's like to be a child? You remember back in, when you were young to be fearless? A child has none of the preconceived kind of fears that we have. I'm afraid to tell people about my faith. I'm afraid to tell them about Jesus. I'm afraid what they may think or what they may do. A child doesn't have that fear. You take a child to a group setting and you talk about once they get the concept of being loved by God and God has enabled us to love others, it changes the whole mindset of the dynamic and relationship of the individuals that are involved. A child will go up and talk about his or her faith with no fear. Jesus loves me. They'll start singing at some of the most inappropriate times. I think back to one of the times that I thought it was inappropriate. Boy, was it perfect timing. I'm glad one of our kids was a missionary because I sure wasn't acting like one. We were on a flight from Tokyo to British Vancouver and went British Columbia, and as we're flying, the turbulence hit, and everybody's screaming, and so what did my kids do? They were taught when they were afraid, sing. All of a sudden, they start singing, Jesus loves me. And sure enough, there were people in the back of us, in front of us, joined in. And it calmed down at least our section of the plane. And that's the type of fearlessness that a child brings to the mix. The greatest problem we have as an adult is fear. Fear of health, fear of financials, fear of politics, fear of community. If we but trust in God, as we heard in Romans, who's the authority, who is the one who is in charge of all? It's God. Why would we fear knowing that God's in charge? The other thing that children learn, and they're really excited about it, I don't know about in your household, in our household, growing up down in the basement, we had the location to show how much you grew. And down in the basement with a yardstick, my dad would take us down there and on one of the corners of the door to the pantry that we had in the basement, he would mark your height. You know, and we would all stretch up just a little bit to show that we've grown. And it was such an exciting time to look at the beginning of summer and the end of summer, and he did it. Every year he would start at the beginning of the summer, at the end of school, and then going back the next year. He even made me do it when I was in high school. I said, Dad, I'm not growing anymore. Yes, you are. 
And then I realized it was more than just physical growth he was talking about. He was identifying within me a maturity and a spiritual growth that I didn't even recognize within myself. Growing up is hard. You remember it physically, emotionally, spiritually. Growing to the maturity that you're at now, you could never imagine that incident of when you were a child. But a child grows naturally. It just happens. It should happen to us as hard as it is. Embrace some of the things that you find as challenges and let the growth take place. Use your faith and see how faith can take you from one instance to another. The disciples learned how to grow because at that point in their lives, it becomes a choice. You can either grow in your faith or you can shrink in your faith. You can grow in your maturity or you can reject it. Children don't have that option, and how blessed we are to see it. We have that option today. Lord, how do I become closer to you? Some of the incidences are you pray, you worship, you connect with God, you look at and you look at the gospel and say, that's for me. Christ went to the cross to die for my sins. For God so loved the world, not just the world, for God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Those are the things that are truly a blessing for all that are involved. So it happened. One of the things that I learned as a child from my grandmother, of all people, was how to fish. And Grandma said, you know, be careful, but enjoy it. And she taught me how to cast. And sure enough, a few times casting, everything went really well. And then she let my little brother come on the dock. Your brother should learn too. Well, what can my little brother teach me? Nothing. Oh, you watch. And he was a natural. I wasn't. So he's casting. And sure enough, boom, the hook goes right there between my thumb and my finger. And my brother goes, whoops. You know when you hear whoops? And my grandmother said, does it hurt? I was screaming. She said, don't worry, I have a pair of pliers just for such an emergency. And she took those pliers and she said, one, two, on two she pulled smart woman. This past summer, we're out on the dock and my grandson's casting and sure enough, what happens? He gets a hook in his hand. The lessons are things happen. You learn as you grow, but children teach us to trust. He turned to me and said, what do I do? I said, I know exactly what to do because my grandma taught me. So I put on the pliers and I said, one, two, boom, pulled it out. When you come to God, come to him as a child and literally say the words, Lord, what would you have me do? And look to his love as the guiding force because being loved, it will cast out the fear. As you are loved, it will get you excited to go out and seek the lost and to do the work and the opportunities Christ has brought before us. When you're loved, it makes it possible for you to change and to turn away from the things of the world and to embrace the love that God has for you, to make all things to new, and through God's love, you can grow. Those are the things that we learn from children. We close with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, it is challenging to grow when we think that we have grown enough. And to go back to our childhood, to go back with the eyes of a child and look to you, is exactly what you're calling upon us to do. Help us to humbly come before you, asking, Lord, what should we do? 
How can we become closer to you? How can we embrace the very gifts that you give? How can we be comforted and not be afraid? And dear Lord, you respond very clearly and directly. I am with you. And I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you, God, for this and all the gifts that you give. And help us to remember how truly blessed we are as we celebrate Rally Day today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise now as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son.